Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here, back with another top 5 video. This time we're going to be taking a look at my top 5 space stations. So let's get right into it. In 5th place, rather appropriately, is Babylon 5. Located over Epsilon 3 in the Epsilon Eridani system, Babylon 5 is a diplomatic space station, the 5th iteration of the Babylon project, but the only one not to be destroyed or lost during or soon after its construction process. As the intro sequence famously tells us, Babylon 5 is 2,500,000 tons of spinning metal, and home to a quarter of a million humans and aliens. The station is essentially a huge O'Neill cylinder, using a rotating centrifuge drum to create a simulated gravity gravity environment, which is packed with a variety of embassies, recreational facilities, quarters, and other utilities. I like B5's design a lot, it's a very good hard sci-fi design with the large radiators on either side. I enjoy the rotating docking bay and the way approaching ships have to match rotation in order to land on board. We also get a great look at the internal mechanisms of those landing bays in numerous episodes. The station has a retractable defense grid, which has some awesome animated sequences when it's deployed and put away. And I particularly like Babylon 5's interceptor arrays which are a, a rare example of energy weapons designed to shoot down the projectiles from other energy weapons, which is not something we see very often in science fiction. The sheer scale of Babylon 5 and the uh, collaborative process that went into building it is very well conveyed by the visuals in the show, because the station is quite clearly massive. On multiple occasions we see how it completely dwarfs Earth Alliance destroyers, even Minbari ships. We see a, an Earth Alliance Explorer class in one episode that comes to about half the length of Babylon 5, and the Explorer class is a truly massive ship in its own right. Babylon 5 is perhaps one of the most ambitious settings for a show that clearly didn't have quite the budget to properly communicate it, but they did a valiant job all the same. With the few sets they had and the map paintings and green screen effects, they managed to create a generally convincing spin gravity station interior, and it makes for a wonderful location that you become very attached to throughout the series, which makes for one of the most important emotional touchstones in the fantastic, fantastic story that is Babylon 5. In fourth place, Tycho Station from The Expanse. Now this is an awesome hard sci-fi space station with some really cool features that makes for one of the most visually impressive locations in the show and one of the most interesting locations in both the books and the series. The station is a shipyard and a home to employees and associates of the Tycho Corporation, also a de facto headquarters for the Outer Planets Alliance run by Fred Johnson. It's 700 meters in diameter with a central sort of habitat and assembly ring around the exterior with a classic curving internal concourse for the main sort of promenade area on the inside. As you can see, there are large space doors leading to hollow internal sections for storing spacecraft, as well as numerous outrigged docking clamps on the exterior, and dozens of interesting little details with communications towers and waldos and cranes and various external mountings. One of the most interesting features of this station, as described in the books, is that all of the internal compartments within the ring and within the central areas can rotate through 90 degrees degrees to accommodate for thrust gravity, so the station can then accelerate using a massive drive cone on the ventral side and relocate to other parts of the solar system to serve as a construction platform in other areas. It's through these means that it was used to deploy the massive fusion torches that originally span up the asteroids of Eros and Ceres, as well as a number of other large-scale construction projects within the solar system. It's not entirely clear whether this mobility persists in the TV show's version of the station, as we've never seen it move, and I'm not entirely sure if it has all of the same details details and components described in the book, but either way, it still makes for a fantastic setting and an awesome looking set piece in the series. Tycho is also responsible for many of the most visually impressive sequences in the show, mostly involving the LDSS Nauvoo, which was of course built by Tycho Station. When we see the Nauvoo leave its berths and set off on its journey to Eros in Season 2, we get to see all of Tycho's automated tugs in action as they remove the docking clamps and remove the large bracketing areas and help clear the ship's moorings and push it out on its journey, and those support craft are again seen in Season 3 to turn the Nauvoo around after the Tycho salvage fleet operated by Drummer catches up with the ship. This is one of those locations that is packed with so much fantastic detail that it's just appealing to see it on screen at any time. The little sequences in Season 1 where the Rosinante is being refitted on the docking clamps, even just simple things like seeing the bars and the command areas and the quarters and the docking umbilical tubes, just a wonderful hybrid of interior set design and exterior VFX. A really fantastic adaptation of one of the most interesting locations in the books.
In third place, Deep Space Nine. And I must admit, this is largely out of personal affection rather than anything objective. The station's design is very cool and very distinctive, but most of all, what this station did was provide an incredibly endearing setting for one of my favourite sci-fi series of all time. The station was originally Cardassian and fell into the hands of the Federation and the Bajoran militia at the start of the show. This gives us a reason to have a station that isn't just another Federation design. It's a very distinct Cardassian shape. It looks a lot more ritualistic and angular and imposing. And this is part of the general theme the station has throughout the series, to have all of these characters start in a hostile, forbidding place, which is the last place any of them want to be, and to have it slowly turn into this home and this symbol of the sort of family they've built and the connection they've made with the planet Bajor and the inhabitants of the area, and to have this Cardassian station become the symbol of the last hope against the Cardassians, really. It's a brilliant example of a setting and an object or a station used as a manifestation of the themes of the show and it works perfectly in that role. The station has an exterior docking ring and an internal habitat ring with a smaller circular area in the centre beneath the ops deck which plays host to the promenade and again that provides this wonderful ambient atmosphere with Quark's bar and Garrick's shop and all of these little touchstones that you become familiar with and used to. The same goes for the ops centre and Odo's little security office. This was the first Star Trek show to be about a stationary location where protecting the place that these people have now come to consider a home was the overall objective objective rather than to seek out new discoveries. So it was important to create this kind of village atmosphere, this this familial multifaceted location, and they did that perfectly. In second place, Crescentia from Treasure Planet, one of my favourite films of all time. Also known as Montressa Spaceport, this is a massive crescent-shaped space station that appears from the surface of Montressa to look like a crescent moon in the sky, which is used in one of the coolest reveals I've ever seen, as we see a zoom shot through the window on the surface of the planet to reveal to the viewer that it is in fact a space station. This is just pure, wonderful science fantasy goodness, as we see all the great little details of the outrigged docking and jetties all along the side and the bazaars and market areas and big domed buildings along the surface. A lot of the architecture and styles of the actual buildings kind of remind me of the Baldur's Gate series, particularly the city of Athkatla from Baldur's Gate 2. But really the overall aesthetic that Treasure Planet managed to pull off with its wonderful visual style in the ships and the locations is brought to its absolute apex in this scene. I've said many times it's a terrible shame that we didn't get more in this setting and that the film itself wasn't more of a success because it is just a fantastic piece of science fiction, a really truly entertaining wonderful film and something that really evoked that sort of layer of wonder in me when I was younger that really got me into science fiction in a big way. This was one of the the huge influences for me and I think this moment in particular is when you really get brought into this world in the perfect way. Before now we've only seen the Benbow Inn and some areas of Montressa and it's been kept fairly grounded but now is when you get this massive grandiose look at this awesome society and this fantastical technology and I never tire of seeing this sequence. It really is wonderful. If you've not seen Treasure Planet, please do check it out. It's more than worth your time and I hope you'll enjoy this moment as much as I always do. In first place, The Citadel from Mass Effect, my favourite sci-fi IP. This, to me, is just an iconic design and shape, one of the most identifiable images of the franchise. And again, much like uh, Crescentia, the location that basically brings the player into the world for the first time. You have your self-contained story on Eden Prime to set things up, and then when we first see the Citadel emerge from the Serpent Nebula and we get introduced to all the races, that is when you're finally brought into the Mass Effect universe proper, and it's done perfectly. The station has two distinct distinct internal aesthetics for the Presidium Ring, which contains all of the sort of lakes and grassy areas and gardens. It's a place for the embassies and the Citadel Tower and the more aristocratic financial districts, which is then juxtaposed with the Ward Arms, which are the huge retractable outriggers to which entire cities of standing skyscrapers and smaller structures are built. This, in premise alone, is just a fantastically original and striking concept for a location, and it becomes all the more fascinating as 
the central mystery of Mass Effect 1 and to a lesser extent Mass Effect 3 regarding its backstory with the Reapers and the mass relays and the mysterious keepers and the various parts of the Citadel that keep it functioning that most people can't access. It's a fantastic sort of monolithic example of great science fiction storytelling and world building, working both as a tool for mystery and narrative and also as a hub for all of the fantastic races and cultures and ideas that the Mass Effect series has going on. A wonderful location and an iconic space station, one of the greatest contributions of that fantastic franchise and I think a well-deserved first place for this list. Thank you all for watching. This is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.